Which one do we start? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good evening to all. This is Vishwas, digital marketing expert from Rera Consultants LLP. I welcome you all for the webinar on GST series for real estate. Today's topic is GST applicability in case of plotted development revenue sharing. I am honored to welcome our speakers for the day, CA Venugopal sir and CA Rajesh sir. Let me start by introducing our first speaker for the day, CA Venugopal sir. He is a founder partner in Venu and Vinay Chatted Accountant since 2002 with academic credentials which includes securing All India 45th rank in CA final. He is also certified information system auditor and has completed various other certification courses from ICAI namely DISA, course on business valuation, course on internal audit, course on fraud detection and forensic accounting. He has completed a one year course from IIM on data analysis and business intelligence. He has authored various industry specific and books on GST. He has contributed to the technical guide on GST, audit released by ICAI, other publications material. He has developed of Excel based free utilities on GSTs like JSON Reader, creating JSON files, GST Invalidator, Composition versus Regular Benefit Analysis, GST Impact Reader, Real Estate Project Switch Decision Analysis, GST Audit, Working Paper Tool and many more. He is a GST faculty for ICAI and conducted various workshops and webinars. Apart from audits, he has hands on coding in Visual Base, .NET, Python. He also reviews database design. He conducted various workshops for corporates on use of technology, improve efficiency at working using Excel, building automated reports from accounting and financial applications. He is the man behind the development and managing of cloud applications like TaxMile, Insta Financials, and many more. Now, it's the time to introduce our second speaker for the day, C.A. Rajesh Sir, who is one of the top chartered accountant in practice at partner Venu and Vinay, chartered accountant and proprietor of RKTR and Co. He is practicing in the field of indirect taxes at Bengaluru from for more than 20 years and advising clients on compliances, tax planning and representation to the government and authorities. He has a number of books on GST, Central Excise, Service Tax, KVAT as author, joint author as well as assisting author. To name some of the books, Handbook of Annual Returns and GST Audit, GST Ready Reckoner, GST Tariff, Practical Guide to Service Tax, Central Excise Made Simple, Central Excise Law and Procedures, and KVAT Audit Manual. A manual. He has also contributed for background materials on GST and UAE VAT published by NCI. He has been training the professionals, students, industry, and departmental authorities in the field of indirect taxes on invitation from ICI, ICSI, NACIN, Tax Department of State and Central, Educational Institution, Trade Bodies, Professional Bodies and many more. Written many articles on Central Excise, Service Tax, VAT and GST for various professional journals. Today, from these experts, let us learn more about GST availability on plotted development, time of supply in plotted development, taxation of infra services provided to the customers. Now, I request Venu sir to take over from here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Venu sir? Yes. Let's start. Okay, in the interest of it, I am muting everyone. So when you can put your questions in the chat. Perfect. So welcome on to yet another series on the real estate. And today's topic is GST applicability on plotted development in case of a 
revenue sharing arrangements. Thanks to Rera Consultants LLP for ongoingly hosting the sessions on GST knowledge series and uh, Opaza and Naredko also partnering for having the sessions. Uh, my colleague Rajesh also joined in the new course. Uh, uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat when uh, when Rajesh sir joins uh, and Ashikam joins, make them also uh, co-host. Okay. Hope the session is getting recorded. What we are going to discuss today? Yes, sir. It is recording, sir. Yeah. What we are going to discuss today is on basics of plot development and especially on the taxation for the landowner and the builder, the infra services which are provided in the plot development and the availability of ITC in the plot development. Always we've been talking a lot on the apartment construction. So we are looking at the plot development and today's session in the plot development is more tilted towards a revenue sharing arrangements where the builder is going to sell all the plots and a share of revenue is given to the landowner. As we go on, if you have any questions, put up in the chat and we try completing the session by 4.45.5. Let's start with understanding the process that are involved in the plot development. The landowner is going to identify his land asking a JD to the uh, developer saying that, can you build it into plots, convert it into the plots? What are the activities the landowner is going to do? He is going to do various activities and which would start from getting a plan approval sanction and doing how the marking has to happen, all those things they would be doing it. So he will be going to wherever the respective authorities are, he will be getting the plan sanction. Once the sanction is done, he is also going to do the activities relating to leveling of the land, laying of the pipes or infrastructure related activities, building and STP units, various activities he would be doing, including putting up into a road and making it into like a proper plot. This is what the landowner is in joint, in conjunction with the developer, converting a plain land into plots. Now, once these plots are identified, these converted plots would be shared either by an area or by way of revenue. So there will be some demarcation saying that some units belong to the landowner, some units belong to the developer in case of an area sharing. In case of a revenue sharing, all the units would be sold by the developer and he will be sharing the revenue to the landowner. Broadly, these are the activities that are happening. Let's look at from the taxation perspective how this would show. So we are talking about a revenue sharing joint development agreement. Now, in a revenue sharing joint development agreement, let us look at the transactions that are happening. Transaction number one, the landowner by virtue of a joint development agreement allowed the developer to come inside the plot and do development activity. By power of the JD, the developer has done an activity called works contract service. It's not an apartment construction, it's a works contract service. He has developed the plots and given it. So the initial transaction is between the landowner and the developer. Landowner given the power to the developer to do a joint development agreement with revenue sharing arrangement saying that you sell and share a portion of the revenue. I will walk the, through the same with some numbers in an Excel. What happens, developer, once these plots are done, he is selling the plots along with the infrastructure to the end customers. So developer has provided a works contract service to the landowner is one on one hand I am saying. On the other hand, I am saying developer has 
sold to the all the plots to the end customers. So is this has that mean the developer has done two supplies? The answer could also be kind of an yes. We will come in a while. Out of the sale proceeds that have come, the developer is sharing the sale proceeds by way of revenue share to the landowner. He is sharing the proceeds to the landowner. All right. This is the overall picture. Now let's look at the taxation perspective, the taxability of it, the taxation perspective. When we look at the tax elements, tax ingredients, taxing applications, first, for entering JDA, there is no tax. The people ask, what about development rights? I'll come in a while. For the second, where the developer has provided works contract service, which is a supply, there would be a tax levy. When a sale is happening to the end customers, the sale could be in two stages. Stage one or model one, where it is sold as such as a plot, or there is a different two separate agreements are entered with the customer, one for the sale of plot and another for an infra. In such a scenario, there is no GST on the sale of the plot to the end customer. Why, if there is an infra that is being sold, there appears there would be a GST and a revenue arising of this transaction. It could be from the sale of plot or it could be from the sale of infra or both, which is shared to the landowner is a transaction in revenue, transaction in money, which has nothing to do with the GST that remains outside the perspective or the purview of the GST. I'll also walk you through with some numbers and examples, but broadly, out of these various elements of the transactions that are happening, some are taxable, some are outside the purview of the levy. If I have to explain it, the diagram, one by one, the landowner has given a right to develop the land and make a layout right to develop the land and make a layout question that comes is it a development right if so should there be a development right taxation that's one aspect that would come developer has developed the entire layout he has developed the entire layout while developing the entire layout some portion of land in case of an area sharing belongs to him. Do we say that the developer has developed something on his own land is a question that comes. Developer is selling to the landowner or developer is giving to the landowner share of revenue from the sale of plots. Can the revenue received by the landowner for the share of revenue Will it be akin to the value of the development right is the question that people may have. Of course, landowner is not selling anything to customers directly, so that aspect will not be there. When the developer is selling to the end customer, there could be a scenario, the plots are being sold during the stage of the developments. That means a brochure has been formed even before the layout is done, there are bookings that are happening. And there are some plots which is remained unsold or sold post development or post release order. How we call about occupancy certificate or completion certificate in an apartment construction, we look at a release order in case of plot or development. So the question that would also come up is, will there be anything tax difference if the units that have been sold before release order units that have been sold post release order. These are the aspects of the taxation that we have to, each one of us has to look at. In case if you have some other taxation item, we will look at that. Let's start. First, the landowner to the developer. The activity it is, 
he has given the right to develop the land in the layout. The issues that comes up, is it a supply under the GST? And if it is a supply under the GST, will the taxation of development right, which is discussed in Central Tax Rate Notification 4 Oblique 2019, on 30th March 2019, would it be applicable? If that is applicable, should the builder play, uh, pay a reverse charge under 5 Oblique 2019? If so, what is the time of supply and value of supply? These are the issues that needs to be addressed from the landowner to the developer perspective. Firstly, land being a, a natural asset or natural resource, natural resources never comes an absolute ownership to anyone on the earth. When you are owner of a land, you are owner of a limited rights of that resource. Like the land has an ability to lease it. Land has an ability to develop. Land has an ability to mine. But all these are restricted. You can't lease it to a terrorist. You can't develop by building a skyscraper. You can't do a, a one kilometer deep the mining, nothing of that. They're all restricted. Now, when I do a plotted development, when I do a plotted development, unlike an apartment construction, in an apartment construction, the land loses its ability to develop further on it once an apartment is constructed. While in a plotted development, the right to develop on that land is still intact in the land. Unlike an apartment construction, what we believe, there is no concept of development right giving off in case of a plotted development. While it is akin to a works contract supply. Hence, the landowner mere entering a joint development agreement to with the builder or the developer will not invoke a supply and it is not a development right. Hence, the RCM is not applicable. Accordingly, the question of time and value of supply do not arise on it. That's the first activity. Activity number two, where the developer developer has developed whole of this land into plots or a layout which is readily saleable. And we all know if it is like a naked project, 45% of the land will definitely go off by way of a road or a drainage system or any, any of that, which is owned by the respective municipal authority or the corporation or any governing body. That means the right on that land is relinquished and the ownership is given to the local body which is governing that. Who is now obligated to maintain that from then on, from there on. Who is giving of that land? It is not the developer, it is the landowner is giving off that land. It is his land. The ownership of that land is passes directly from the landowner to the local body. What is the developer doing? He is developing that piece, that road, drainage, STP, he is developing that piece. Now, while he is doing that activity, the questions that would arise that is it a construction service? Notification 11 oblique 2017 updated by 3 oblique 2019 entry number 3, 313233 which talks about construction of an apartment whether a residential, commercial, affordable, other than affordable. Would this entry fit into that as a construction service or would it be a works contract service? Because we know if it is a construction service, then the rate of tax is 7.5% with one third land deduction or easy to understand 5% on the sale value. If it's a works contract, it is 18%. I am of a firm belief 
that the plot development is different from an apartment construction. The entry given under 313233 or 36 do not apply to a plot development and hence it is a work supply of a works contract. GST is applicable on that. A GST is applicable on that. Given that the GST is applicable, what will be the time of supply and value of supply? Now, we have notification 6 oblique 2019, which is giving the time of supply in case of an apartment construction where the time is deferred to the project completion date. We also have 4 oblique 2018 prior to the new uh, regime where the, again, the time of supply has been deferred. However, in GST, the section 7, the scope includes, supply includes agree to supply. Now, plotted development is a continuous supply of service. So, time of supply, now we should read with section 13, read with section 31. In case of a continuous supply of service, basis the agreement the time of supply has to be identified now in case of a plot and development i would believe the time of supply would trigger whenever a sharing arrangement is drawn between the developer and the landowner that's when an identified share has been given to the landowner. Let's start with an area sharing that would be easy to understand. So let's say in a plotted development, 60% of the plots are with the landowner and 40% of the plots are with the developer. So when this 40% plots have been identified saying that, hey, these are the plots you will be taking for providing this service. So what the service the developer is providing? So the developer is providing a service of constructing whole of the land, barren land or uneven land into a plots or a layout. The time of supply, which is a works contract, would be the time at which plots have been identified and given to the land owner and the developer and the earmarkation of the plots happening, that would be the time of supply. And that being the time of supply, what will be the value of the supply? Given that this is a barter transaction, the barter is the developer is doing the development of the whole of the land, while in lieu of such development, the developer is getting a portion of the plots. A value of such plots would be the value of the works contract supply. How do I find the value of the supply? Whatever is the value of the plot on the date of such supply will be the value of the supply. Generally, when the brochure is printed and, and given saying that these are the prices. So when, you are, uh, when a customer is coming and entering into an agreement, no builder, no, so no developer or no landowner cannot sell any unit unless some units have been identified that these units are belonging to them. So at the first sale would be treated as the value of supply of such service, which is a works contract service. What will be the rate of tax? The rate of tax would be 18% and this is not an apartment construction. The entire 18% would be taxed in the current case. The entire 18% would be taxed. Will ITC be available? Of course, yes. For the developers, there is no concept of input tax credit. Builders do not get input tax credit. That is only for an apartment construction. In a plot development, whatever the cost that the landowner is incurring is nothing to do because landowner might be incurring marketing costs. The cost that is incurred by the builder for the purpose of developing the plot will only be reckoned for the purpose of taking ITC. Broadly, you can consider two types of input tax credit. Input tax credit in terms of forming the layout, input tax credit, which is in terms of selling the layout. 
input tax credit towards forming the layout is eligible for ITC. Input tax credit towards admin and marketing cost is not eligible for an ITC because that is a different activity. Rule 42 mandates every taxable person, every taxpayer to segregate the credits by nature. 17 subsection 2 and 3 deems sale of land is an exempt supply and 17 subsection 2 says every exempt supply input tax credit relating to it is not allowed. So a marketing cost relating to the sale of land will not be eligible for input tax credit. Let's move to the next aspect which is sale of the plots by the developer. Now we have adopted the value of the plot for the earlier supply from this entry. So when the developer has sold the plots to the end customer, that value is borrowed and adopted to the previous supply. In the earlier supply, we did not tax the money that has been collected from the customers. We only tax, we only taken that as the basis and we have taxed it at the rate of 18%. The question that may also come up, should that 18% be paid from the pocket of the developer or can he collect it from the landowner? Now, GST being an indirect tax, it is a contractual and commercial obligation. So the joint development agreement would define whether the landowner who is relinquishing his share of land is including the GST or excluding the GST. The obligation to pay such GST to the government is on the developer, whether or not he is collecting it from the landowner. When it comes to the sale of the plots by the developer, so the plots of the end customer, which could be at different phases during the course of development, post development, everything. Now collection of development charges sometimes is included in the land, sometimes is not included in the land. Let's look at those. Firstly, the issue is can there be a segregation permitted between land and development charges? Because I've been giving saying two models. The answer is yes. A developer, while he is selling the plot, he may say, I am selling this plot at 3000 rupees per square feet. Or he may say, I am selling this at 2000 rupees per square feet plus 1000 towards infrastructure. Both types of agreements are possible. Circular 177 also clarified, Schedule 3, Entry 5, sale of land is outside the purview of GST and which is same applicable to a plotted development, whether it is a developed plot or underdeveloped plot, undeveloped plot, whatever be the name you call. When a plot is being sold, there cannot be any GST on it. However, if the developer is entering two agreements, agreement one for sale of plot, agreement two infra services. For the purpose of RERA, what would be disclosed is the value of this plot. Sale deed would be done for the value of the plot. Stamp duty is applicable for the value of the plot. Since it is a plot, it's outside the purview of GST. There cannot be any GST for the value of the plot which is subject to sale deed. I am not saying just because you are paying stamp duty, you are, it is outside the GST. Supreme Court has clearly explained in the aspect theory where every taxation has its own aspect. The aspect of the stamp duty is under the purview of the state. So when a, when a property is sold, the stamp duty is levied. Right. So it cannot define saying that since that one tax is there, another tax cannot be there. Because there is an entry in Schedule 3, Entry 5, saying that there cannot be a GST, it will be neither treated as supply of goods or services. Hence, there cannot be a levy of GST on such plot. There's an argument which comes up that the right to levy the land itself is not in the 
a power of GST, how can an entry and an exemption come, which is a constitutional, let's not get into that. So the point to note is to the extent of the value of the plot, there cannot be GST. But if there is a another agreement which is collecting additional infra services, that means the developer is saying, apart from the plot, I am providing you an infra services. To the extent of the infra services, GST is applicable again at the rate of 18% on whatever is the value that has been collected. Moving to the last aspect, where the revenue is shared to the landowner. Whereas the revenue is shared to the landowner on a pre-agreed, could be a fixed amount or could be a percentage of the actual sale that is happening. Landowner may say, hey, give me 10 crores and I'll be happy with that. Or landowner may will say that every rupee that is coming, give me 60 paise, I'll be happy with that. Whatever be the model. Firstly, is this activity linked for the development of the layout? The answer is no. This activity is not linked for the development of layout. This activity is linked to sale of the plot. It's linked to sale of the plot. Is it a supply and GST applicable? The answer is no. It is not a supply. It is a transaction in money, appropriation of the revenues. Hence, GST will not be applicable on such transaction. There are other matters which I want to discuss before I take an Excel with a practical example. Some numbers I have given for ease of your understanding. Then we will get into a Q&A. In the interest of everyone, I have muted everyone, but feel free to put your questions in the chat. So these are the aspects which have been floating around in the market. So you need to know there is a school of thought where there are uh, the GST experts who strongly believe that plotted development is akin to apartment construction. And I am not saying they are wrong. But in my view, that is not applicable. In the absence of a clarity given by the GST Council, CBIC, these views are coming up. Now, as a trade body industry, you should still definitely go back and give a representation asking if there are two views that are coming up, please clarify which is the right view. Because we know the GST officer might not be a silent one. He is always under the pressure of generating some revenue to the state. So he knows that given that there are two views available, if you adopted view one, he will say, no, no, it is a view two. If you have adopted view two, he will say view one. This is something you should consider making a representation. Second, can the value of the scale of plot be split in two, two ways? Model one, where as I said, entire sale of plot, which is sold as, let's say, example, 3,000 rupees per square feet. Alternatively, model two, the sale, the plot portion is spoken as 2,000 rupees per square feet. The infra services is collected as 1,000 rupees per square feet. Can these two agreements possible? I'm not saying parallelly simultaneously, but builder one is adopting model one, builder two is adopting model two. How would the taxation happen? If you adopt model one, you will pay stamp duty on 3000 rupees. If you adopt model two, you will pay stamp duty on 2000 rupees and 18% GST on 1000 rupees. You cannot pay stamp duty on the infra services because the service provided on an immobile property, which is not inside the purview of the stamp act, it is outside the purview of the for sale of the property and the stamp duty thereon. So even these two models are available. So let's move to an Excel file. Let me share an Excel file for you. In the meantime, you can put your questions that you that you may have. All right, so first and foremost, is the screen visible to you all? If yes, if is the Excel visible? Can you put it as yes in the chat if you're able to see the Excel? <laughs> T 
see we are not seeing face to face so that's the important thing i always get in touch with the people all right these people have confirmed that the excel is visible let's get on to understanding this now i have hypothetically prepared some assumptions some examples so i have taken i have taken uh basis uh, uh, some numbers that a land is getting developed into 150 plots the size of the plot some are 40 60 which is 2400 square feet some are 50 80 4000 square feet let's take the average plots that are sold average some are that average is 3360 the rate per SFT which is sold is 2000 rupees. So the average value of each plot is 67 lakhs. And this is a 100 crore project. This is a 100 crore project. All right. Hope you are in with me on the statistics. All right. Now, what are the costs which the developer has incurred in doing it? Developer has paid approximately around 30 lakhs towards the joint development stamp duty agreement. He has spent around 72 lakhs in the uh, planning uh, approval, all those things cost. He has incurred around 13 crores in doing the construction. He has spent 93 lakhs towards his admin, spent 2 crores in marketing, 4 crores in the various loans that have been borrowed. He has incurred around 21 and a half, 21 crore 62 lakhs in developing this project. The breakup of it, like they when we talk about development, which is the major 13 crores, the 13 crores mainly went to 3 crores on civil, architect, landscaping, electrical, installed transformer, plumbing, STP units, the entrance arch, compound wall the sanitary, paper work, some uh, park sports equipment, some fabrication work, PMC, everything put together is 13 crores, all right, which is the major cost. Then there is an administrative cost. Uh, approval was towards release order. So there was a pre-release order, post-release order of the Kata. So all that costed 72 lakhs to him. Administrative work, site office rent and the people salary, some internet. Marketing cost, he spent 2% uh, on the total 100 crores. So 2 crores is on the marketing that he has spent. Now, how does the revenue sharing work? Let us say out of this total sales, 100 crores, 60% goes to the landowner. That means 60 crore, 48 lakhs is payable to the landowner. What is retained by the developer or the builder out of 100 crores, 40 crores is retained. Now, GST is applicable on what? GST is applicable on 100 crores or because 100 crores is collecting from the customers. The answer to it, out of 100 crores which is collecting from the customers, 60 crores doesn't belong to him. 60 crores belongs to the landowner. What belongs to him is 40 crores. These 40 crores this 40 crores is towards providing a box contract services to the landowner. That means on 40 crores at the rate of 18%, on 40 crores at the rate of 18%, which is 7.5 crores, 7 crore 25 lakhs, the developer has to pay to the government GST. Can he take input tax credit? Answer is yes. He can take the input tax credit of the development cost. He can take the input tax credit of this development cost. While he is not eligible to take any input tax credit on the sales and marketing cost because this is towards the sale of the land. This is towards the sale of land. So he cannot take an input tax credit of it while he can take an input tax credit of the development cost. Right. So this is another thing one should be aware of. That means here he has incurred 22 crores and around 
so closely 30 crores is his project cost and the 40 crores is sale value 10 crores is what he is making his money at a motor motive this is the numbers now the question that may ask that arise is how did you get this 100 crores because the sale value sale value is happening at a different time intervals and the value of the plot gets appreciated should you reckon that the answer is no i've just given you a hypothetical example another thing assuming no plot is sold how will you arrive at value then that scenario you will be going with the guidance value whatever is the sub register the sr rate the running sr rate per square feet which the landowner is deriving is the value that you will be adopting the value as, as on the sharing agreement is the value the landowner is giving to the developer that is the developer revenue gst is applicable to that now what happens let's say this value what we are seeing is 100 crores Let's assume that this is the value as on the sharing agreement, but actual sale happened for 120 crores. Let's say actual sale happened for 120 crores. The incremental 20 crores is appreciation in the land, which is the sale of land, which is outside the purview of the GST, right? So these are the various aspects that you need to know. And input tax credit for these items would be available. Input tax credit for the marketing related will not be available. This is something you need to know. Lastly, <coughs> if I collect infra separately, let's say out of 2000, let's say out of 2000 rupees, let us say 1500 towards land and 500 towards infra. In such a scenario, in such a scenario, the way the taxation would work, I'll put it as 1,500. The GST would be applicable on the share that is getting the builder, this portion, plus 500 into... three three six zero into 150, which is... Infra value, he is collecting around 25 crores as infra on this 25 crores, 18%. So the builder will be now paying 9 crore 97 lakhs to the GST. Now you may ask, can that 60% uh, adjustments be not be done on the infra? Answer is no. It's a service that is being provided by the landowner or by the builder. So it's not applicable. So this is how, if it is towards full 2000, it is taxed at around seven and a half crores. Otherwise now it is tending towards 10 crores. It's all how you are structuring the agreements. That is what would define how the taxation is going to happen. And the last thing that you should also know is if some units are not sold, what would happen to it? Let's say 70% are sold, 30% remaining unsold. Even it is sold, not sold, it doesn't matter. You are adopting the value on the sharing arrangement date or the release order date. Whatever is the value, you will be taking that base and you will be paying 18% GST. You may ask, assuming nothing is sold, the builder has not received anything, still is it applicable? The answer is yes, it is applicable. So now I will come back to the presentation. If you have any questions, let's go over the questions. In the meantime, if Rajeshar has joined, uh, Rajeshar, have, he has been in department for a hearing in case he is, he'll be joining soon. Yeah, we will uh, go over the questions. So let me allow others to unmute. So you can now unmute yourself and ask questions. And this is our WhatsApp channel. So we, we share our GST updates. So in case if you are not part of our GST group, you can subscribe to this channel. 
with this we have come to end of today's session bang we are on time 4 45 we intend to end we have completed let's look at various questions yes oh uh, hello sir uh, yes pranam uh, yes sir good evening sir sir uh, actually, uh, actually i have a question uh, yes. if uh, the builder uh, owns his own land and he uh, he uh, developed the plotted developments on his own land yeah so uh, he is collecting uh, infra charges uh, in uh, uh, as you explained in a model to uh, separate uh, land cost separate and infra charges separate so there is a charge uh, gst on infra charges correct absolutely you are right so uh, is is he uh, able to take itc on infra uh, cost he has incurred. yes very much he can take an input tax credit on the infra cost okay okay yes uh, the itc on marketing expenses available uh, Anikhil ji, answer is no, because the marketing cost is towards sale of the plot. Sale of the plot is treated as an exempt supply, 17 subsection 3. 17 subsection 2 says any ITC relating to exempt supply, you cannot get input tax credit. Hence, the marketing cost ITC you will not be getting in a plot development. It, uh, 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 GST ITC related to the architectural service? Or yes, GST relating towards the development of the plot is available in case of a joint development arrangements. No, oh, in case of uh, plotting uh, plot uh, uh, plot or infrastructure charges, the architectural service GST, whether it is available hundred percent or in in proportion to land and uh, infrastructure charges ratio. No, it is available hundred percent. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir. Yeah, my name is Captain Kanan. Yes. I have a land where I got into a joint venture with the builder hmm. and uh, he's getting a layout approval from the CMD, Chennai Metropolitan Authority and oh. he's constructing villas and uh, he's selling the villas hmm. and uh, it's a pure revenue sharing where uh, he'll be taking 56%, I'll get 44%. Hmm. I have nothing to do with any of his activity. We got into a joint venture agreement, then we gave the power of attorney to him. And uh, I am under the impression I pay whatever uh, revenue I get from him, I pay only the long term capital gains on the land. Or uh, also, we have to pay the GST complicated uh, complication or calculation in this. Yeah, so now the whatever you are talking has got no connection with whatever we discussed so far because yes. yours is a villa development. The taxation of villa development is completely different from what we discussed so far. In case of an apartment or a villa construction, the landowner, when he is receiving, in your case, of 44 uh, villas that you are getting, if you are selling those villas in the course of construction, that is before the project being completed, you will have to pay a GST of 5% on the sale value of that while you will get an input tax credit for such you villas. No, sir, I'm not getting a space sharing. I'm doing only a revenue sharing, pure revenue sharing. Okay. In a revenue sharing arrangement, landowner is relinquished or relieved from all liability. So every rupee that builder is collecting, 44 paise he is paying you, you don't have any obligation of GST. Oh, great. Sir. Even we want to do some development. You are available in Bangalore, is it? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, lovely. We will come and meet you sometime. Sure. Lovely. Thank you. Have a good, good day. afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for your presentations. Uh, one question is asked that uh, is the TDR is applicable on the plotted deployment? In my view, answer is no, not applicable. And so the uh, second thing is that, that you have said that uh, the applicability of the GST on the joint sharing agreement will be on the when the agreement is done. Suppose that it is on the 6D agreement. A 6D agreement is done prior to the rare applications. See, I am not telling that when the joint development agreement is done. I am telling when the sharing arrangement agreement is done. Itself, the sharing arrangement is done before the rare application only. It could be, see, you have to identify the plots. When I say sharing, in a joint development agreement, you may say, hey, landowner, I will take 60%, uh, builder, you take 40%. But, but when actually, the plots are being developed. 
you can't yeah. cut some plot into that ratio. So yeah. you will actually get into one more sharing arrangement, identifying which plot belongs to whom. Some may be east facing, some may be towards far, different things. At that point in time, the, the liability would trigger. Sir, at that point also, then practically it expects the, the ITs is not available because we are not uh, expenditure on the deployment. Ah. We are getting the layout, but still the, the uh, like the deployment like STP and road and all that will be done on later on. Right. So, so on that, the applicability of the GST will be the prior one, but the ITC will on the later on. That is my... I, I'll get your point. So that is where most people today are adopting Whenever the release order has been sanctioned, they are taking that as the basis because 6 oblique 2019 is deferring the time of supply to that date. Okay. So release order from the from from, from the department value. From the respective local body, local authority. Okay. Till then we can do the agreement with the customer. But which is which is right now not a, 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 there is no right answer to it. It is an open idea for debate. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah Mr. Venu, Sh Shinwas here. Yes, Mr. Shinwas. Yeah, I have uh, two points. Uh, one is that um, when we are doing an agreement with uh, um, the end customers, okay, we are clearly mentioning that what is the basic plot value, like what you have mentioned is 1500 rupees and also another 500 rupees as the infra charges. Okay, but uh, the agreement is being done only. We are doing the one agreement. Is it uh, uh, is uh, possible to get the only one agreement? Duly uh, demarcating these fifteen hundred and five hundred rupees. Theoretically, it is wrong because mm -hmm. uh, um, you are selling the land for thousand five hundred. So sale agreement for the plot should be thousand five hundred, and it should be a separate agreement for providing infra services. Even the even the GST department people, uh, if you can showcase these agreements with 1500-500 bifurcation, probably they will be able to accept that agreement or they will continue. Yeah, I them. don't see any issue with the GST, but sub-registrar may not agree with this uh, arrangement and sub-registrar would want to tax it at 2000 rupees and not 1500. Sub-registrar is considered when you go to the registration, then you go with the only plotting. I am talking about the sale agreement initially. You can't have a sale agreement different and sale deed value different. Mm. Mm. Okay. Even uh, the other point is that uh, here, uh, the moment uh, when you get this sharing agreement is done, mm. um, the 60% is going to the landowner and 40% is coming to the developer. Right. You mean to say that uh, the forty percent is works under the uh, TDR, okay? That is supposed to attract tax for eighteen percent, right? Here, yeah. there is no TDR, sir. Now, what I'm saying, the not the TDR value. This is in forty percent value which we are getting, which we are selling to end customers, is getting attracted to eighteen percent. Absolutely correct. Uh, hi, sir. Sir, if you could just explain the time of supply of that seven point two five crores in the example. The time of supply, uh, that is where I'm saying it is more uh, uh, technically on the sharing agreement date, but many people adopt it on the release order date. Mm. Mm. So if I take it on share ag sharing agreement date, so say I enter execute uh, sale deeds with the customers subsequently. So you mean to say I have to... Uh, you discharge my liabilities much before in executing an agreement to sale with the customer itself? Absolutely. The answer is, I'll tell you the simple answer. You are not the owner of the land. You got the land by virtue of the joint elephant agreement. That means you have provided a works contract service to the landowner in lieu of a consideration payable in the cash. Since he is not able to give you cash, he has given you a plot. That plot, you have sold it. So you have converted a consideration in kind into consideration as a cash. So that means that there, actually there are two sales that you are doing. You are selling works contract to the landowner. You are selling for selling the works contract. Instead of he giving you cash, he has given you land. So you purchase the land. Again, you are selling the land to the end customer. So the point at which when you are selling the land to the end customer, you have already done the works contract sale 
Hence, the time of supply is at the sharing agreement date and not on the sale date. Now, it could be a situation that you might not even sell anything. You can't say mm -hmm. that since I have not sold anything, I did not get any cash, I will not pay GST. That's not a right argument. So, uh, in the same example, you said there are, uh, you know, people who are taking it on uh, release order time. So, in you that case... end up paying interest. Generally, plotted development is an activity of six months. So, you will, you may end up paying some interest for the deferred uh, payment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Hello, sir. Mr. Upan, can I talk to you? Yes, but sir. In the case of uh, that uh, 2000 rupees per square foot, yes, 1500 rupees is the LA, this one. What is that? Uh, 1500 is the uh, 1000 is the land cost and 500 is the development charges. That is assumed, right? When I uh, take the advances from the uh, prospective buyers, correct? Huh? I can I relinquish with the only for the first uh, plot charges. You are, you are, uh... I, don't have, I don't have to pay GST for those things, and subsequently, as and when the uh, that amount is relinquished, then subsequently it will be for the uh, development charges. Can I pay uh, Can I pay GST at a later date for the only uh -huh. GST is form over substance? The form says if your form says that money you are paying is towards land and not infra. That means it is towards land and it is outside the purview of GST. So no GST on it. Why well, you might also get into a legal issue saying that if I register the land, I will say, see, look, I don't want your infra. I will get some other builder to do an infra for me. I might do it. Now to avoid taxation, you might get into some legal compliance. Hence the, the lawyers would say, let it be towards infra and the plot value would be different. But whatever your documents say, if your document says towards land, you can defer your GST taxation. Yes, Rajaji, go ahead. We'll go one by one. I'm here. So I'm audible, sir. Yes, you're audible. Please go ahead. So thank you for giving a good insight on GST on plot development. So my one query is, I mean, uh, one, uh, let's say, you know, project is developed and now we receive the 100% completion from the active study period. Actually, on project development, a uh, few activities are still pending. I mean, uh, it is going on and a few uh, packages are still to be completed. Let's say, you know, the system is there, uh, like uh, tapping the nerve connection and electrical points on board, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, maybe the transform also, actually, the transfer performer uh, to get the permission from the authority and to be installed on electro only. So, let's say uh, the total cost of the infra work is 10 crores and 2 crores of work is, uh, is still uh, yet to be completed. But uh, I received the uh, architect certificate 100% as a completed and I put the revenue as per the accomplished standard. But now, actually, my point is that from the GST point of view, uh, so uh, that two code, whatever the work is still to be uh, to be completed. On that, actually, whether I will be able to uh, claim as an ITC benefit, as an ITC yes. you, are, you are eligible to take ITC, just that you might not be able to utilize it. You can carry forward and utilize it for wherever other projects are applicable. But my uh, all the plotted are sold. Yeah. The, uh, receiving no problem. The no problem. For, uh, that's so not I, uh, eligible to get the credit. After yes. completion. Yeah, you will not get a refund of it. You carry forward to utilize to some other liability, but you are eligible to take the refund. Okay. You are eligible to take the ITC and not refund. Okay. Oh, Venus, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, Venus, sir, is this uh, is this uh, what about JDA signed before uh, the 2017 uh, the G before the GST Act? Uh, still, the answer is same. In case of a plotted development, there is nothing changed. 2019 did not come and change anything. The What you are seeing on the screen, the diagram is applicable. Pre-GST, post-GST, post-2019, all it is applicable. Okay. And uh, one more request is, when are you doing on uh, uh, plotted development, sharing the plots? Area sharing. Okay. Area sharing is pretty simpler than revenue sharing, so we can do one session. Sir, okay. uh, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Sir. 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I have posted a question. Uh, what would be the impact on GST if the sale of land and infra is executed in one agreement, but without specifying the infra portion as a separately? Then it should be treated as whole towards uh, sale of land and uh, you have to end up paying stamp duty on that. But when it when the agreement is reviewed by the GST authorities, they may litigate saying that you have collected something in the name of infra. So you may end up paying uh, GST and stamp duty on the same amount. It is in to litigation. So it will be in litigation. So I am nowhere bringing up the point of the infra in the agreement. Okay, I know that uh, I'll be collecting the infra from the customer or else uh, I'll be developing the infra. But without collecting the infra also, I'm mentioning as yeah. 3,000 no. rupees per square foot. Then GST is not applicable on the infra at all. Okay, so even uh, the department will not litigate? They cannot. Because you are selling everything as a plotted value. And that's where you are paying stamp duty as. And the moment you pay stamp duty, you are recognizing this is a Schedule 3 item. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, considering the fact that time of supply is on execution of agreement, like area sharing agreement, where demarcation, where how much plots is for developer and how much for the landowner, yes. there is no question of input tax credit because I wouldn't have incurred any expenditure. So, so that means... Generally, no, I, I get your point. Generally, yeah. the area sharing agreement is, is actually done after some amount of the plotting and work is done. See, they... Overally, they will agree 60% to landowner, 70% to landowner, 30-40% to the developer. But yeah. they will go revisit at a point in time when the, the plots are visible and saleable. That is correct. So allocation, allocation are, agreement. Huh. Allocation right. agreement, I'll have to execute much before I execute an agreement to sell because I don't know right. how much is my demarcation. Right. So right. Right. apparently right. it will be done before agreement for sale is executed. Is so by then I is... have substantially not incurred the expenditure itself on the project. But as you go, uh, that is why many people have taken the release order date as the time of supply. That is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that the time of supply, because 6 oblique 2019 or 4 oblique 2018 has taken the time of supply to the completion. So the final release order date is being adopted by many as the time of supply date. And that is where I have raised this point, the industry to represent, to specifically give that as the oh. date. So in a, if if in this if this was the same case of an area sharing agreement, so uh, being uh, because the GST liabilities will come on the landowner, so he'll be eligible to take input tax credit Why of this. Why would the GST liability will be coming on the landowner? Say I am executing an infrastructure development agreement again, like as a landowner, when I'm giving it, I'm just not selling it as a. Oh, even you are saying that landowner is also selling thousand five hundred to work yeah. in front. Yes, yes. The landowner yes. is responsible to pay GST on that five hundred rupees, and he is eligible for input tax credit because he is buying the infra services from the developer. Um, okay, got it. Thank you. Venu sir, hello. Yes sir, yes sir. Go ahead. Uh, Venu sir, hello. Srinivas here. Yes sir. Sir, uh, see, as a landowner, first option is if we sell, we are getting the input credit on the GST at five percent. Sir, this on is the interest of the apartment complex, sir. So there is no ITC to the landowner in this scenario. Okay, sir. In case of apartment. If the landowner is not willing to sell, he wants to retain the entire share of his uh, developed area. Yeah, it's a cost to him. It's a cost to him, but he is not. He he says he doesn't want to pay GST. So that's a commercial understanding between the landowner and the builder. Okay, that's got nothing to do with the GST act. What will be what will be the uh, assume sir? The flat cost is one crore as per the SR value. Yeah. And it uh, we, we build about 20 units. 10 units goes to him and 10 units to the developer. 10 units he holds back. He is not going to dilute it. Yeah. So what is his uh, GST obligation? Zero. So he doesn't need to pay. So I don't need to collect it and pay. No, no I am not talking about builder. I am only talking about landowner. 
okay landowner doesn't need to pay right yeah but how much uh, liability will be the builder has to yeah which is for each unit 5 lakh rupees so 10 units 50 lakhs the landowner the builder has to pay that is landowner's share correct on the landowner's share correct okay okay sir thank you thank you sir thank you. hi sir yeah hello for my question i have uh, regarding yeah let's say actually uh, yeah, give us the example sir, your voice back. is rajiv ji your voice is very very like uh, oh, breaking okay. am i audible sir no i am able to hear hello maybe you can switch to phone or something sir really not audible sir so one more question i want to post yes sir uh, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to know that. Actually, it's uh, uh, 508. I uh, in the just in the interest of others, I want to. Uh, I don't want to hold others. So my responsibility. I'm saying thank you for attending. And those who wants to uh, get some questions clarified, please stay. I am here. Those who have questions, please ask. Yeah, formally the session is complete. Please go ahead and ask the questions. Yes, Hello. Uh, with regard to the uh, um, GST, what we are going to make the payment on the revenue share or the area sharing. Okay. That will be at the rate of 18% as confirmed earlier also. So, uh, will it be and uh, it will be declared by the developer on the RCM basis, right? No, there is no RCM. This is a forward charge level. The developer is doing a works contract service to the landlord. Landlord. It's a forward charge only. Then the 18% has to be discharged by the uh, Landowner yeah. to the developer. Between landowner and developer, I'm not going to talk. Sir. It's a commercial arrangement. Yeah, it is on advertisement. Builder has to pay to the government. That's all I'm saying. Okay, okay. developer has to pay to the government. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm audible. Yes. Sir, in case of area sharing, is RCM applicable on uh, to the developer on the landowners? Uh, this one. Answer is no. In a plotted development, that is what I said. Four oblique 2019 and five oblique 2019 do not arise. So everyone is saying that there is an RCM on the development rights. The answer is no. For apartment construction, yes, not for plotted development. Okay. Thank you. Five. Hi, sir. Waiting for person. Am I audible? Kind of. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, so when uh, I question regarding this, uh, what you have uh, shared that example, uh, like the 13 towards the development cost, in that development cost, let's say actually I have uh, incurred uh, as a cost uh, regarding the supply of uh, this material actually. So I purchased the material, let's say, uh, transformer of 1 crore rupees from the any supplier. So in that uh, transformer, there is a pure material. Like. So whether in that uh, transformer, whether I will be able to get the ITC or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, any anything that you own, you don't get ITC. Anything that you are procuring for others, you get an ITC. 17 subsection 5 clause C and clause D is applicable to those who are consuming self. In this case, you are building the transformer and you are you're giving it off to the project. You will get the ITC of the immobile property, which is transformer also. But it is not work contracts. It is not labor plus material. All of not... plot and development is a work contract, sir. Okay. 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 Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vani Gopal, sir, can I ask you a question? Last question. Go ahead, sir. 3,000 rupees is the uh, sale of plot per square foot. Hmm. 2,000 rupees is the, uh, I have bifurcated. Out of that uh, 3,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees is the uh, plot charges and 1,000 rupees infra charges. Excellent. Now the question is, I will do one thing. Instead of 2,000, 1,000, I will make it as 2,500 and 500. Ah, is it okay? 500 rupees no, only I can pay. To 500 rupees no only I can pay. question new, newer transactions. So you can go ahead and do it. Even uh, suppose 2800 and 200 also will do 3000 and 0 will also do. That means uh, for infra, I don't have to pay. You will not pay anything for infra because you are paying on the full sale consideration automatically. 
the entire three thousand rupees you are yeah. paying towards works contract. Towards work contract. Oh, okay. Either yeah, two thousand yeah. separately or this. So you are paying, and you are ending up paying same. Yes, it only for the registration purpose. Absolutely correct. But GST purpose, the entire three thousand will be levied. Indirectly or directly, it gets levied. So that is why I am saying it will not change anything in an area sharing. Whether you buy for a kid, don't buy for a kid, your tax liability will be the same. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. All right. So, uh, if you have any further question, please feel free to put an email to me, and uh, I'll be happy to take. Hello. And thank you, everyone, for making it an interactive session. Thank, thank you, sir. Question is recorded. A copy of it will be sent to you on the registered email address. It's Hello. definitely, sir. We will share the link to all the clients. Those participants, those are. Thank you very much once again, dear participants. Thank you for your active participants and special thanks to our speakers for giving us their valuable time and insight of today's topic GST applicability in case of plotted development revenue sharing. Hope the session was informative and knowledgeable. And uh, more than half an hour we spent it on the question and answer answering. So once again, thank you, sir. If you have any queries, 